In these problems, we want to write the equation of a polynomial that's going to have certain zeros as solutions. Um, so it's actually the exact opposite of what we did when we factored. With factoring, we started with our equation, uh, factored it, and got our solutions. In this one, we're going to start with our solutions and come up with the equation. So the beginning parts of these problems are always just kind of some legal math mumbo jumbo. Don't really worry about it. We don't. Uh, it doesn't really apply to what we're going to be doing. Um, be careful about this. Some people see that one and they think of that as another zero, and that's not the case. So. Just gonna ignore the first part of this. We're just gonna kind of deal with it as we go. So the important part is to find out what your roots are, your zeros are, are gonna be. And so there are three of them in this case, which tells us we'll have a third degree polynomial. Remember, the degree is gonna be the number of solutions we have. So uh, you have to kind of think backwards. Uh, if we had negative two as a solution, what would have been in parentheses in the step before it when we factored? Uh, and usually if we look at a couple examples, uh, people can figure out, well that would have been x plus two. Uh, we had the opposite number in the parentheses. Uh, if we had x plus two as a factor, then negative two was gonna be our solution. And so let's do the same thing with one. So we'd have x minus one, and then we want to have x minus four to get four as an answer. Uh, and here's sort of good news, bad news. Good news is that's, you know, technically the answer. Uh, that polynomial would have those three zeros. The bad news is we don't want to give that as the answer. We actually want to multiply this out. And so these aren't hard problems. These are actually review problems. We've done these a while ago. Uh, they're just long problems. And so what I need to do is multiply these three things together. And so uh, the way we did it before, let's go ahead and take two pieces and multiply them together first. Uh, hopefully you're at the point you can do that in your head. Otherwise, do the box method for that. You can do a two by two box. I'm just going to do that in my head to save time. That's going to be x squared uh, plus x and then minus 2 when I multiply that. Uh, if you need to do that uh, on paper, then go ahead and pause the video and try that yourself to convince yourself that that's right. Uh, but then I need to multiply this now by x minus 4, so I have one more step to do. At this point, I will do the box method because I don't want to do that in my head. Uh, let's do a 2 by 3 box to multiply this together. So uh, I've got x and negative 4 and then x squared and x and negative two. And I'm gonna go through and multiply every row by every column. And so uh, exponents add together, so x to the third, x squared and negative two x. Along the bottom row, I'm gonna have negative four x squared, negative four x, and then positive eight. And finally, to finish this problem, I'm gonna pull everything out of the box and add up all my like terms, uh, putting these in descending order. So x to the third will go first. As predicted, we have a cubic polynomial uh, because we had three solutions. My x squared terms add up to negative three x squared. Once I simplify, uh, my cons or my uh, not constants, my uh, x terms add up to negative six x and then my constant is positive eight. Now, I don't want you to forget one minor little detail after doing all that work. Don't forget to put the y equals in front because we are trying to write an equation. So that polynomial is gonna be the polynomial that has those three solutions. Really easy to check this. Graph that polynomial, uh, go to your table and check your three zeros. Uh, check the x values of negative two, one, and four in your table, and you should see those matched up to zero in the y column. turns out that if we ever have complex or irrational solutions, meaning solutions with i's or square roots, they always have to come in pairs. We can never get just one. And so uh, the way this will make the problem slightly different than what we just did is when we take a look at the zeros they give us, for example, in this first uh, question, they give us three and square root of five as an answer. They don't tell us that there is a third answer that has to be the negative square root of five. All square roots and all i's have to come with their opposite. It's called the complex conjugates or the irrational conjugates theorem. You'll always need two of them if there's i's or square roots. And so this polynomial will again have three answers like the one we just looked at. So it'll start out the same way. Uh, to get three as an answer, I must have had uh, negative or x minus three in parentheses. To get square root of five as an answer, I must have x minus the square root of five. And then I must have x plus the square root of five. So all those signs change within the parentheses. So uh, once again, I need to multiply these pieces together. A uh, huge big piece of advice, when you're dealing with these irrational and imaginary ones, always multiply the conjugate pieces together first. What will happen is all the weird stuff, the square root of the i's will drop out, uh, leaving you with just a nice polynomial. So that's my big advice. You don't have to do it that way, but the problem's gonna be really nasty if you don't. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how this will multiply, just because it's a bit different than what we've done. Uh, uh, previously. So x and negative square root of 5 and x and positive square root of 5 is what I want to multiply together. Remember, start with multiplying the conjugate pieces together. So this will be x squared 
this would just be x squared of 5, and this will be negative x squared of 5. If you take a look at what's going to happen, positive x squared of 5 and negative x squared of 5, those are going to be opposite, so they'll just cancel out. That's why we're multiplying the conjugates together first. Uh, and then finally, this last box, a positive times a negative gets us a negative answer. The squares will cross out and just get us negative 5 for that. So once I multiply those pieces together, I just get x squared minus 5. I still need to multiply that by the piece I skipped over, that x minus 3 piece. So our second step will be multiplying those two parts together. So one more box method to get these pieces multiplied together. Or if you want to do it in your head, if you're able to do that, that's great. Uh, so x squared and minus 5 and then x and minus 3 gets me x to the third minus 5x. I don't think there's going to be any like terms to combine this time minus 3x squared, and then positive 15. And so writing my polynomial in descending order, don't forget that y equals, I've got x to the third. Uh, as predicted, we have a third degree polynomial. Minus 3x squared, minus 5x, and then plus 15. Once again, if I want to check this, uh, type this polynomial into your y equals, like you're going to graph it, and go to your table. As long as your calculator is set up in ask mode, as I showed you in a different video or in class, you can actually type in even the square root of five or the negative square root of five and you'll get um, that, you'll get those uh, answers to be zeros. And let's take a look at just one more example. Once again, uh, they've given me two zeros, two roots, uh, one and negative three i. I have to recognize though that because I have an i, I have its opposite as well. So positive three i must be another zero even though they don't list it. I's and square roots always come with their opposites. So uh, my three factors, once again, it'll be a third degree polynomial. I'll have x minus one to get one as a solution. I'll have x plus three i to get negative three i as an answer. And I'll have x minus three i to get positive three i as an answer, we change those signs. You're free to multiply in any order, but uh, you'd be crazy to not multiply the two conjugate pieces together first. Doing that will ensure that all the weird stuff, the i's in this case, cancel out. So uh, if you think you know what you're doing, you can go ahead and pause the video and just kind of finish on your own. Uh, we haven't talked about i's in a while, so I wanna show you what happens and why the i's do all cancel out. So once again, with the box method to multiply those two pieces together, I've got x squared, I've got three i x, and then I've got negative 3ix, and so that part's pretty straightforward, like last time those just cancel out. And then finally for the last box, negative three times positive three is negative nine, and then i times i is i squared. And so I had said all the i's will cancel out, but we still have them. This we have to go back to unit four, we haven't talked about this one in a while. Remember what i squared is equal to? It was equal to negative one. And so what this last box really is, is negative nine times negative one, or just positive nine. So once again, multiplying the conjugate pieces together first was a great idea, because now all the weird stuff is gone. So all that's left is x squared plus nine. I still need to multiply that by the x minus one. So go ahead and, uh, I'm not gonna do the box method this, I'm just gonna give you your final answer. Try the box method though on your own, pause the video. Uh, otherwise, if you just wanna watch, your final answer should be y equals, x to the third minus x squared plus 9x and then minus 9. Uh, and once again, you can uh, check this. You can try to check this on your calculator. Unfortunately, typing 3i into your table doesn't work. I've tried it. So uh, we can't test this one as easily as we tested the other ones, but that is going to be our polynomial.